Good morning. Uh, this is Pastor Mark, uh, Faith United Methodist Church. I'm here in the sanctuary again. It's Good Friday morning of Holy Week, and uh, we're in week four now of this social distancing and working together to try to make the best of it. I'm reminding myself daily, and I invite you to do the same, that Holy Week is uh, the most important week in the life of the church throughout the whole Christian year. And even though this is much different for us this year, we need to remind ourselves daily that these days are still being celebrated, they're still important, and they still have the meaning for us that they've always had. We look forward to Easter, which is coming just a few days away. Uh, the feedback I continue to get from you has been positive. The way we're trying to stay connected during this time seems to be working. So we will continue that. Um, we are going to do something special for Easter Sunday. This coming Sunday, Carol Prohaska uh, volunteered to do this for us. She's going to come in Easter Sunday morning and at 10 o'clock she's going to ring our bell in the bell tower. Uh, we, we're going to do this, even though we're not going to gather here for worship on Easter. We're still going to ring the bell, and this will be a, kind of a symbol, a sign for all of us, our community, that even though our church building is closed, we are still very much the church. And I thought it would be interesting for us. We don't normally have a chance to do this because, you know, we're here when the bell rings. We're here gathered for worship. But it might be interesting if you have the opportunity on Easter Sunday morning to just go outside to see how far the sound of our bell carries. Uh, I know I can easily hear it at my place because I've heard it already, um, but you may want to do that. Uh, the plan is Easter Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, Kara will be in. We're thankful that she offered to do that and the bell will be tolled at 10 o'clock Easter Sunday morning. Uh, we're, we're continuing to be very blessed. Many, many, many people have been regularly uh, sharing their contributions, their gifts for our ministry. Uh, they come in daily. Uh, people are dropping them off. They're mailing them in. Uh, of course, our electronic givers, those automatically come in. Regardless, we're just very fortunate. We're very blessed. We're very thankful. Uh, I have talked to a few of our people that have been affected uh, negatively by this COVID-19. They've lost their work. They've temporarily lost their income. And we, we know that that's a reality of this. And certainly, you know, we understand that people in that situation cannot contribute right now as they normally could. And really, um, we just want to remind everybody that we have our Samaritan ministry here. If anyone needs help, that is a, a very active ministry of our church. It's been in place for many, many years. It's handled very confidentially. Uh, Dave Rotz and myself, our treasurer and myself, are the only two people that know anything about it. If anybody needs any help, anyone can contact me confidentially. And we do have ways uh, that we can help people during this time, many, many people have been affected. If we haven't been affected, if our income is still coming in, then it's probably even more important now that we regularly uh, support our ministry so we can keep our ministry strong. But we're just very, very thankful for many, many, many people who have been faithful uh, through this journey. And we really do um, just, we're thankful for that. One of the features um, that I think gets the most attention probably uh, in, in our sanctuary is our Good Shepherd window. And here we are on, on Good Friday, and normally, I'll be honest, I don't really think about the Good Shepherd window on Good Friday. The scripture that uh, inspires the, the window comes from John 10, but this is not a normal Good Friday. And I think one of the reasons why this window has been a feature that has been so helpful to people, if we just think for a moment how many people have come into this sanctuary over the past 105 years, uh, many times in their life journey, going through a difficult time, and probably have gotten uh, 
solace, comfort from seeing the beautiful picture of Jesus the Good Shepherd and that reminder has been helpful to countless people over the years and I'm sure you know that's the primary reason why this window is a feature of our sanctuary that's so important. But as I was reflecting on that this past week, I realized that really the, the Good Shepherd text is somewhat about Good Friday. And I want to share just a couple verses of the scripture. It comes from John 10. I'm going to begin the seventh, the second part of the seventh verse and read through verse 16. But this is really the scripture that inspired uh, our beautiful Good Shepherd window here in our sanctuary. Jesus uh, shares these words with us. I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he's working only for the money and doesn't really care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Just as my father knows me and I know the father, so I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I have other sheep too. They are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock with one shepherd. It's an interesting passage, and if we know uh, anything at all about shepherding, it's still very commonly done in the Holy Land region of the world, even today. I was told that, um, especially during Jesus' day, it was common for a shepherd to look for a place of protection for the flock for the, for the night. And they were, would often just pick kind of a, a unique feature of the geography around them to try to uh, corral the flock for the night. And sometimes the shepherd would literally lay down his own body as a gate to protect that flock for the night. So that if a wild animal would have a thought of uh, wanting an easy meal that night, it would literally have to go over the body of the shepherd to harm the sheep. And that's a wonderful image for us. And I think that the verse that really speaks to us today, Good Friday, is we remember this good shepherd that sacrificed his life for all of us, for the sheep. This scripture really does speak to this special day for us. And because of the uniqueness of the time we're in on this Good Friday, it, it really, I think, forced me to look at that scripture in a different way and to share it with you today. The other thing I wanted to share about this particular passage, it's especially meaningful for me because it was shared at my grandfather's funeral 15 years ago. And I don't know about you, but during this time, this has certainly been, I think, the most challenging season of my journey in life through this uh, COVID-19. Um, I have been thinking about those who in my family have gone on before me and their strong faith. And interestingly, during this time, their faith has helped my faith during this time. And I remember at his funeral, this was the scripture, one of the scriptures we shared. We know that he knew the shepherd and we had hope and faith that the shepherd knew him. And that certainly brought us comfort during that time 15 years ago. And he's been now with the Lord 
since that time. The other emerging scripture that I wanted to share relates to Easter, which is coming. There's been many, many scriptures emerging through this, and I've been uh, listening to different teachers and preachers, and it's been interesting to me, uh, scriptures that have been emerging, and one comes from Paul. It's actually in uh, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 4 and verses uh, 8 and 9 and 14, and I'll share those words that Paul gives us from 2 Corinthians 4. Paul says, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. And then continuing on to verse 14, he shares this very hopeful word. It's really an Easter message for us. He says, we know that God who raised the Lord Jesus Christ will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. Today we remember and we celebrate Good Friday and we, we do that knowing that Easter's coming. And in this journey of COVID-19, in a sense, it's like a Good Friday for all of us because there are just very unusual struggles and challenges. But we know that Easter's coming. We know that there'll come a day when we'll be through this and we can look back. And we know uh, Easter is coming. And Paul shares us that hope. We know that God who raised the Lord Jesus Christ will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. Let's continue on this journey through Holy Week together as we celebrate Good Friday today and as we look to Easter Sunday together and enjoy that hope and celebration that the Lord can give to us. Just a reminder again, if I can be of any help to anyone, uh, call or text me on my cell, 717-414-3047. Let's just be in prayer together. Lord, we just come to you in this time. And we're mindful today of many people who've lost loved ones. We're mindful today of people who had to pass from this life into the next alone, without any loved ones by their side, and how difficult that was for all involved, O oh Lord. We're reminded too of funeral celebrations that are happening with uh, very few people, people that are currently battling this COVID-19, Lord, we just lift them in prayer and ask for your healing. People that are working on the front lines that are putting themselves in harm's way to help others, oh Lord, we're just very thankful for them, but just surround them with your spirit of protection and help them and guide them. People that are out of work, that have families to support, oh Lord, that have loved ones to support, are experiencing a very difficult time, and we just pray for them, oh Lord, and we just ask for help in whatever way it can come to them to help them. But especially across our whole world, oh Lord, we just call on you again, our great physician, to give us the healing that we need. World leaders are stressed with very difficult decisions. Just continue to guide them, O oh Lord. Help them to make good choices and help them to lead in ways that are effective. And we're so thankful for our church family, O oh Lord. I'm just so thankful that they've been so good through this and so faithful and we're working together and we're doing our best to continue to be the church, O oh Lord, and to follow you and to help others. And we're blessed. 
and just continue to guide us and be with us now as we journey through this end now, these last days of Holy Week, and as we look to the glorious resurrection of Easter. Help us as families and as a church family and as a community together, O oh Lord, to celebrate this in a glorious way, even though it's not the way we are accustomed to celebrate. But most of all, O oh Lord, just keep us in your spirit. All these things we ask in Jesus' name.